Hey, 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 Matt, the helpful home inspector, come in at you. We're going to have, we're, there we go, there we go. <laughs> How's it going, you guys? Matt, the helpful home inspector, coming at you from live from our studio up in Hartford, Wisconsin. And I have a special guest today, Mr. Mark Smith, coming in. We're going to be talking about the home selling process, our main topic today. Um, but we have lots of good stuff, as we always do. Um, if you enjoy our content, if you like watching us, check us out. Check out our other videos. we got 200 and, what are we up to, Tammy? 230 videos now? Something like that. Yeah, 230 videos. We hit 300 subscribers uh, you on the YouTube channel uh, this week, which is exciting. We're at 307. Who's going to be 308? Could be you. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. Give me a bell notification. That way, when the show goes live and we put out new videos, you'll be made aware of it on your phone, tablet, computer, wherever you're on. And then if you like the show today, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're looking for any content, you want to learn something about your house, you know something about your house that you want to know uh, more about, Put it in the comments. Drop us a line. We'd be happy to uh, modify some content and give you guys some input. Um, or if you have questions about a project you have coming up or anything like that, we're happy to answer those today for you. Um, so, as always, uh, well, first, welcome, Mark. Yeah. Welcome back. It's been a little bit. Like, yeah. Like, almost um, three weeks, a month. Probably. Probably a like month. That. Yeah. You've been a busy character lately. We have been. We have been. It's been that time of the year, right? Yeah, that yeah. time of the year. But uh, you guys have been busier than most. Which is a good thing. I maybe I don't know. I try not to yeah. measure myself on what other people are doing, but we're definitely we're definitely uh, we had a plan going forward and to help fifty family this year, and we're we're on track. So sweet, yeah, yeah. Bring on the pies, absolutely. There we go. Yeah. So <laughs> Mark, at the uh, is it the end of the year we do we do it right before Thanksgiving. Right we before do the Thanksgiving. Tuesday before we do our pie day. Yeah, yeah. It has a pie day where he gives away pies to all his clients and past clients. Yeah, they're about stuff. the size of this table. They're they're, they're big. <laughs> they're big. They're like those. Like Mondo, pies. and you guys are, and you guys were uh, gracious enough to come out, uh, <laughs> hand out uh, whipped cream, and hand out the pies to our clients. That was really, really that awesome. Was good, and the pizza was good too. Yeah, there was pizza that night too. Yeah, MD Saloon. Yeah, it used yeah. to be uh, uh, Finn's. Now it's called MD Saloon. Yeah, very good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, so. Uh, to get our show started every week, we always talk about the defect of the week. So the defect of the week this week is something that a lot of home inspectors don't come across. I would doubt if you've ever come across it. You I ever heard know. of Entron piping? I have not. You have not. I might have seen it, but I don't know. I didn't know it was called that. Probably not. I've seen Maybe it. Maybe Yeah. When I show you pictures of it, you're going to kind of be like, oh, I've never seen that. Before. All right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the uh, defect of the week that we're talking about this week is dealing with radiant heating piping and, and basically the the uh, hot water or hot glycol pipes that take the uh, heated up water or glycol from the boiler out to the radiators, um, and that piping sometimes can be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, now, we in the past, some people have had galvanized steel piping. That's been a problem, right, because then it gets corroded on the inside. You get corroded joints and leaks and all kinds of stuff. Usually that stuff shows itself pretty uh, clearly, and it's evident. Um, this stuff, not so much. Okay. Usually it's hidden. Um, this stuff would have been... Uh, Used in the in the, probably the the late nineties would have been uh, a mid to late nineties. You would have seen this in homes, but it was for a very short period of time. But you still saw a lot of it because it was uh, it was kind of, it kind of took over the um, radiant heating system, kind of like PEX mm -hmm. took over plumbing, you know. And it, it was easier to run, cheaper to run. You could carry a big old spool of it in your back. You didn't have to have big old pipes of. So it was, flexi it was flexible, just like PEX? Flexible, just like PEX, yeah. It. And it came in a one-inch diameter, so you can move a lot of water through this thing, you know, or glycol, whatever you're pushing. Um, and it held the heat, generally speaking, you know. So, yeah, so let's get into our defect of the week here. Uh, here's the little short that we got. Tammy, I'll switch this over here. Hey, gang, Matt Duffel, Home Inspector. Come back from home in West Bend, Wisconsin today. And today we're talking about radiant heating systems. Now, this one has a baseboard heating system pumping either uh, glycol or water through the system, and it does so through these pipes. Now, the problem that we have here today is this type of piping. So this is an Entron 3 by Heatway heat pipe that basically is allowed up to 200 degrees is what it was manufactured for. Um, and with the indicator on here, you can see they have the name clearly listed on there, Entron 3. So this Entron 3 piping um, is, uh, oh no, keep that picture up, Tim. Keep that picture up there. There we go. So this Entron 3 piping, it usually has this orangish color to it. It looks like a garden hose almost, but it's got like a rough finish on it. And it's going to, it always, <laughs> she's quick on the fingers over there. It's always got that labeling on there where it says Entron 3 on it. Let me see if I can back that up a little bit and 
So it says Entron 3. There was also an Entron 2. Entron 2 was uh, made by Heatway as well. Entron 2 had lots of lawsuits around it because of water damage issues and things like that. Um, and uh, ultimately, uh, the, the lawsuit was lost. So Heatway lost the lawsuit. Keep the picture up there, Tammy. <laughs> um, Heatway lost the lawsuit, and uh, ultimately, um, they ended up going out of business. But during the lawsuit period, what they did was they came out with this Entron 3 um, water pipe, and you can see how it's flexible here, you know, so it could be bent and stuff like that and still maintain its shape. It's like it kinks, though. It does. It didn't kink really at all in any of those spots, but, I mean, I would imagine you flex anything like that too right. tight, it's going to kink on you. Um, but this Entron 3 was their um, attempt to... And get away from some of the problems they had with Entron 2. Um, however, Entron 3 was being investigated the, uh, at the same time as the Entron 2 lawsuit was going on for a lot of the same types of issues. Okay. So the biggest issue that they had with there was oxygen penetration through the, the wall of the pipe. Oh. So as that uh, oxygenated uh, water glycol moves throughout the system, it, the oxygen is going to cause you know, corrosion and you know, deterioration of any metal parts and things sure. like that, whether the metal parts be copper or galvanized steel or metal or steel or whatever. It's gonna, everything oxidizes. Yeah, everything right. oxidizes, um, and uh, it, that oxygen was not improving things at all. It, wasn't, it was actually hurting a lot of things, caused a lot of leaking joints and things like that. Mm. Um, and uh, basically with the Entron 3, Entron 2, whatever it is you might have in your home, there's a couple of different ways it can be addressed. One, you can just let it run its course. And and as a leak pops up, you got to get that part replaced or whatever. And you can just keep chasing it around. And that's probably the cheapest way to address it. But it is going to be a continual, like, you're going to have to deal with it over and over and over again. And if you don't stay on top of it, you could suffer water damage, which can be very, as you know, and I know, it can right, be right, very right. expensive to repair, right? Um, so if you do have the Entron 2 or Entron 3 piping in your home, um, that is one option. The other option would be full replacement, and that's just replumbing the uh, you know hot water radiant heating system. Um, and, uh, and that is probably the best way to go to make sure you're not going to have water damage because water damage really is expensive. And right. the insurance company, if you knew that the problem existed, you knew the condition was there for that you have a problem, you know and you didn't do anything about it the insurance company is not going to cover you you know with all likelihood i would guess but um definitely something to look at improving um and you know it is kind of a pain in the butt especially if you have sealed walls and stuff where this stuff is run through you know right right but what's the other option right you know letting your house you know deteriorate deteriorate and get damaged and it's just a bad idea so yeah entron three entron two watch out for it it's an orange uh orangish brown color uh it usually has a rougher finish on it if you look at the the cross section of it it's got a couple of different rings on the inside but ultimately oxygen uh oxygenation of the liquid was the biggest issue Mm. and then with the connection points that the manufacturer supplied had a lot of leaking joints like uh, polybutyl piping did and things like that sure So, so something to watch out for and and uh, keep an eye out for it and make repairs if deemed necessary. Uh, the next one we have is save a buck. So the, the, the thing we're going to offer you today was something I was talking about with a client that I had at a uh, house down in, it was Cudahy area. And uh, they were, they were uh, you know, a, a, a different nationality. They didn't speak English very well. But the dad, his biggest concern was that the sump pump was running every 30 minutes. And th- I gave him some solutions. on. We had to adjust some grading and some downspouts are going under the ground and all that kinds of other things that we could do to get that water away from the home. But he was like, what if that sump pump, the power goes out, what is this, what's going to happen? And uh, the truth of the matter is if the sump pump doesn't have power, that 20 or 30 minutes of water that is pumping out is going to go right into your basement and cause all kinds of damage. So he was very concerned about that. But what I did was I went on Amazon. I showed him where he can get a battery backup for it, you know, and he just had to go and buy a marine battery for the system. Um, battery backup on Amazon. I think Tammy will put a link in the replay video for us, but I'll put, I'll put one in there that I would advise you know it's, it would be a good idea, option for you um usually about 200 bucks um to get a decent one and it should have a test button on it it should have a, a secondary sump pump in case so the whole system is set up for the battery option that if the power goes out it stays running but we also it usually will come with a secondary uh, small sump pump just in case the first sump pump fails um just a Really good way to yeah, back, feel safe, yeah. way to back up that system, you know. Plan B. Yep. You can also get sump pump insurance for your uh, uh, for your home from your insurance company. It's expensive though. I, I bet. I don't know if it's something really worth getting. Um, but we're gonna have um, Dan from Colonial Insurance on in a couple of weeks, and he's we're gonna 
asking some of those kinds cool. of questions. So, yeah, so get a backup battery backup for your sump pump. Um, you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them at Home Depot. You can buy them at Menards. I mean, they have them pretty much everywhere you go, but there's only going to be usually one or two options at the stores. Um, when you go and buy online, obviously, it's a bigger marketplace. So more sure. options available to you. All right, so now... We're going to get into our home, home selling listing process. We, in the last time the Mark was on the show, we went through some of the um, things associated with selling your home, some of the costs associated with it, some of that kind of stuff. Um, and if you want to check out um, that video and kind of go through some of those uh, before you sell your house thoughts, I guess, what, what would be out Yeah, I think that, I think, yeah, we kind, kind of went of through. One. Kind of went through everything about it, about getting ready to sell your house and what happens prior to that. Yeah, that whole process. So now we're going to go from I've decided I'm selling my house. What's that process look like for me as sure. a seller? Um, and uh, you guys deal with this every day. If you're looking to sell your house, uh, Smith Team Wisconsin, you can't go wrong. Um, they have a uh, a great team behind all of them that'll uh, be there yeah. to service you and help you out, um, get your maximum dollar for your home. Yeah, call us at uh, 262-271-6971. We'd love to help you out. Or you can go to our website at www.teamsmithwisconsin.com. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so, Tammy, can you scroll down the thing for me there? Uh, what about a standby generator from my son? <laughs> my son Peter sell. Uh, he's a, he he does sales, customer service type. Mostly sales uh, for Generac. And uh, a standby home generator is another option to provide that continuous power. Um, I think we need to have an episode about generators. I actually just, I actually use mine for the first time. Uh, I always try to, I always try to start it up at least once a month just to Mm -hmm. make sure that it's good. Um, But we had, uh, our power went out for a good 10 and a half hours. (laughs) And I, you know, I'm not so worried about it. Like you can live with, without having that. But we have a chest. Do you have a a Ford? I don't have a, I don't have a Ford. I have a Toyota. Oh. Yeah. I don't think Toyota has it, but Ford, you can plug an extension cord up in the back of my truck. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. So we did. We just uh, hooked it up for the freezer downstairs, and we were gonna we were gonna hook it up to the a bunch of other things. I thought, well, just let's get the freezer, make sure because we, we sure. get, it's, it's oh, completely yeah. stocked. So we want to make sure we and take refrigerator, care of that. whatever. Yeah, yeah. and they, the, those things don't use a lot of energy. Was it, is it a stand, like a standby thing, or is it like a roll away? It was a roll. Yeah, it's a large roll away. Uh, it got as a, a Christmas gift, but yeah, sure, it, it works great. But yeah, having the idea of having one that's already that's already tied into the electrical system, I think is a great idea. Yeah, I mean, it have natural gas that you don't have to worry about the propane. Fuel. Yeah, that, that's the, uh, or propane up north, yeah. Right. But with uh, uh, a kind of a standby generator, um, if you just have the rollaway one in your garage with, with gasoline in it, is the carburetor going to come out gummed up? No, you got to start that sucker up every once in a while, yeah. you know. And uh, who is the guy? Russ Benzer. <laughs> could he, we could have him on with the generator guy talking about how to maintain some of those rollaway ones a little bit better. So, yeah. Um, but uh, let's get into our uh, process here. So um, in, in looking to list and sell your house, okay, one of the first things that you need to do is come up with a plan. Yeah. A plan between you, your wife, your family, that's going to work for everybody. Right. Okay. Um, when do we want to sell the house? We have to have these things thought out about a little bit before we have our agent meeting right Right. um and one of the things that you always got to consider is when are we going to sell the house and when are we going to have to move because if you have kids in school that's kind of a big thing right Right. um and when it when is this vacation and you don't want to you don't want those big things to happen when other big things are going on you know when's when's my daughter's bar mitzvah party that i'm supposed to have in the backyard Mm, who knows? Right, you know? right. So planning some of those things out or graduation parties, whatever it may be, and looking at the calendar, figuring it out or whatever it is probably the first step bef- and, and have some idea what you're. Yeah. And we always, we always tell everybody like if they're, if they're, if they have any idea that they, they might be thinking of moving or making a move um, earlier, the better for us, because the, the, the more time that we have ahead of time, it, we can make a better plan. Cause we always want to have a plan. A yep. you know, plan B plan C plan D all these things that we can have in place. Um, uh, and uh, we get called a lot of times just to list a house immediately. Like, Hey, we want to sell this next week. How do yeah, we sell now? Yeah, right. Yeah. But if we get a little bit more of a uh, prep time, it, it helps us a lot because um, I, I, I did bring a, a PowerPoint just to, uh, just to show you kind of like what we offer for our services and what we do. Um, and I can't read that, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. So do I, I want me to read the list? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So some of the services that they offer with a listing, okay. Is the home and exterior, home and exterior property analysis, 
generate a comprehensive improvement uh, suggestion list. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So real quick, so like we go through the house, um, we sit down with uh, we, we sit down with folks and we kind of look at the list. We start at the curb, same as we do if, if we had a buyer's looking at a property. We start at the curb, we look at everything. So we start looking at the mailbox, you look at the driveway. Mm-hmm. Is the driveway need to be real resealed? Is the is the concrete crumbling? Whatever, yeah. all those things. All those things would show up on a, on a repair as a repair for uh, an inspection. But if we can address that stuff before we even get into the in the whole listing process, yeah. I always tell everybody like if you start at the curb and you're way up, you gotta you gotta act like a buyer trying curb, to buy the house. Curb like appeal. curb yeah. appeal, you want to walk up, you want to have everything in really good repair. It's amazing what you can do to a front door and the area around a front door and how important that is. Mm-hmm. You know, put a coat of paint on the front door. Uh, make sure the doorbell is working. Make sure yeah. the door closes properly, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the the handles on the door because nobody wants to go to a house and get there and, and, and can't it, open the wait, door. Yeah. Uh, and then, then the whole thing rattles and like, yeah. okay, what am I buying, right? So yeah. um, spending that time ahead of time just trying to get that stuff on, in place. But usually I'll do an interior and I'll do an exterior suggestion list. And they're only suggestions for the for the sellers. But it, I think it's a really good idea. Like anything that we can provide to them and in my in my in the way that I do it as far as being the listing specialist on our team is there, there are people who don't want to do anything with their house. They want to sell it as is. There's other people who are willing to do everything. They'll put on a new roof. They'll do <laughs> all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. I always tell everybody, let's be reasonable in the middle. Like, let's do bang for the buck. Like, I don't want you to spend a ton of money unless you're going to get a ton of money back in return. Like, I, I, return on investment. Yeah, and yeah. I always tell everybody, let's make we can make reasonable suggestions like painting a room. Yeah. Like, if it's a pink room because it was a little girl's room, I get it. If it's a dark room because it's a teenager that likes, you know, heavy metal music, whatever – if we neutralize all that stuff and do neutral colors on all that stuff and try to make it more appealing to more people, yeah. uh, can of paints, what, $38, $48? Yeah. Well, and sometimes these uh, small improvements, uh, you have a hard time seeing the exact return on investment or the value that's there isn't, isn't you know, you're going to get $15 for this or, you right. know what I mean? It's not like that. Um, but having an experienced realtor on your side to help you with some of those things, um, not only with that, but like one of the next thing he has with staging consultations and and that kind of stuff, you yeah. know, figuring out how to set the home up. Yeah, so and, sta- and staging. Yeah, and, yeah, and staging. That doesn't mean that you're going to bring in a company that's going to bring in all new furniture, or whatever. A lot of times, if there's furniture there, um, for us, the the call is always less is more. We want to have a good flow to the house. We just don't want to have big giant cabinets in the middle of the floor of a mm-hmm. of a of a room. Yeah. We want to have things that are a uh, little smaller. Kind of get rid of some of the end tables. Now, get rid of the knickknacks. Now, bringing in staging uh, a staging company is a po- is an option. Yeah, we that's, that's the cost of money. It does cost some money, but there is some good return on that because yeah. when we sell a house that's completely vacant, let's say the sellers have moved out, but they haven't sold the home yep. yet, um, bringing in stagers to bring in just minimal stuff. So we always talk about make sure the kitchen, the living room, and at least one bedroom, the the primary bedroom are yeah. are, uh, are decked out. As long as they've got that stuff there, that gives people an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, t- but taking a vacant house and making it staged to have some nice furniture in there, um, it actually is good return on the money. Yeah. How yeah. do you feel about digital staging? Um, I think it's okay, but I think you have to you have to make sure that you comment on that on the on the um, on the listing itself. So, like to give you an example, we have uh, we had a home that was that's being list that, that was listed, and we had the we had every we had all the photos uh, taken, but then they had an estate sale in the meantime before it went to market. Oh. So we made a, we made everybody know that uh, that looked at the listing that said just so you know a lot of this furniture will not be here because of that. It had yeah. nothing to do with virtual staging, but it had to yeah. do with the fact that people had an estate sale and they sold it yeah and virtual staging for those of you that don't know what that is basically taking a a picture of a room and photoshopping in some furniture and things like that just to make the listing look better right essentially um but uh yeah so um a couple other things you guys had uh accurate local marketing analysis uh extensive online and offline marketing uh, to potential buyers, social media. You guys are big on the social media. Oh yeah, yeah. Every so time hit, that we do, yeah, all that up. Yeah, everything from Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. Every time that we have a, a coming soon, a listing, new listing, uh, open house, uh, accepted offer, closing. We do all that stuff. Yep. We try to cover all the bases with all that. kinds of signage outside. And everything. Yeah, That's we believe in cool. organic traffic because it's amazing how many people that will show up at an open house just because they saw our signs. We actually went out and purchased, I think, twenty open house signs so that when we do an open house, there's nobody in that in that immediate area that's going to miss the fact that there's an open Dude, house. I'm at a driving house. down highway 83 the other day. I saw four of your signs <laughs> like at different spots for all your different listings and stuff. And that's a major road. So yeah, even that traffic coming in is huge. Sure. Um, but uh, they also have professional uh, uh, photography and videography. Um, they do a pre-listing inspection. 
with everyone, and then uh, they also have open house events that they do. I know some realtors are not open house people, and I don't understand why. But because it takes a lot of work. I mean, it, even if, even though it's a two or three hour event, it takes you know a couple hours to get everything prepared and get everything set up. Yeah, and then it takes another hour or two afterward to get everything and taken down. And you guys and, are meeting potential buyers for that house, but you're also meeting yeah. other people that are that maybe are looking at buying other houses. And or it could be other people who are thinking about selling their house and are looking for a good agent team, right? Yeah, and that's so possible too. We always yeah. think that it's always a possibility that we're interviewing for another job. Yeah, you know. Yep, yep. And the I think one of the biggest things with that that you guys bring to the table is the negotiating and, and uh, keeping all the the paperwork in order and everything time timing wise. Sure. With you and Sheila and and, and uh, Tanner, I mean, you guys really cover all the bases there. Yeah, and uh, I think that like you were saying about trying to trying to plan certain events around the summer or wherever it is during the year, um, we actually tell our our folks that if we're going to be listing a house. Um, uh, if we list on a Thursday, let's say a Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, and we're going to open a house on Saturday, we always tell them, hey, if you guys want to take a quick four-day trip somewhere, this yep. is a perfect opportunity because we have the Century Lockbox on there, um, uh, and we, we're attending that house. We're probably there a bunch of times during that whole weekend. We keep an eye on everything. If we if it's a vacant house and nobody's home, we go over in the morning, turn on all the lights. At night, we'll go back and turn off all the lights and make sure everything's locked up. We That's kind of like... We yeah. kind of take ownership at that point to help well, out. Well, and especially in the market the way that it is today, uh, you, you put your house up on the market the day that it hits the market, you're going to have a whole bunch of showings and it can be very disruptive to your life. And right. I've had, you, you probably had some people where they're like, oh, another showing? I'm not, I, I, stop it at five o'clock. And it's like, right. nobody, you're looking to sell your house. You want to get everybody through right. that we, house and, that you can. Yeah, you know? and we want to encourage, we want to encourage making sure that we don't have to, um, to not confirm an appointment and say, oh, I'm sorry, we have to decline this one. We try to keep it as open as possible. And mm-hmm. that's why we try to, talk about that game plan ahead of time as yep. much time as you can g- give us be- ahead of time we can kind of talk about that it's also setting expectations with the sellers because yeah they they have to realize that for that short amount of time that we're working in that and trying to get an offer for their house that yeah things could be a little a little bit more difficult than normal everyday life mm-hmm. um, so maybe taking a four-day trip or something like that yeah. might not be a bad idea no not at all and sometimes you do have tenants and things like that that you have to deal with um, but the more time you can give the tenants notice ahead of time yep. that just makes life easier for everybody um, so come with a plan that you guys are okay with and don't make it a short-term plan don't make it a I want to go next week you know plan uh try to plan a little bit as far out in advance as you can so that you can give your real estate agent and you time to get the house ready and right. to do all the things and to have that uh you know listing really pop once you do hit the market not have it feel all haphazard and you know right. thrown together at the last second right um so the next thing you're going to go into is choosing an agent that you trust and believe in um and you know when you meet with your agent they have a, a a laid out plan like the Smith team does and stuff like that, that goes a long way. It's showing not only their commitment to you as, as a, a client of theirs, um, but also goes a lot to show their professionalism and all these other things that are really something that's important and measurable as far as choosing an agent. Yeah. You know? We've been, we've been developing our systems for over four years now and making sure. And I, I basically tell everybody like our clients deserve a system like something that we do every single time it's tried and true. And this is what we do. Um, do we make changes? Yeah. We make changes depending on the situation because you have to be flexible, but yeah. you have to have a system and it's owed to the clients to, to make sure that you have a system in place so that things work the way they're supposed to. Yeah. And it needs to be somebody that you're going to trust, somebody that you're going to empower um, to not only negotiate for you, to have conversations on your behalf, to uh, manage your house and make sure that your house is taken care of when uh, the showings and things like that are going on and that they're not just, uh, you know, going to, be a phone number that right. somebody can call. You know? I always tell everybody if we're in the middle of a listing meeting, I tell them like, if you call and you know this, if you call my number or text me, how, how quickly do I get back oh, to you guys? Immediately. <laughs> yeah. Within, within a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I um, mean that, that uh, access to you as a, as a, a, a a client is, is huge. It's important because you're going to have, you're going to have lots of concerns. Things are going to happen fast in, in a short period of time. And, and having that communication between you and your realtor is, is really a big thing. Um, but uh, yeah. And then as far as your, your uh, agent goes, you know, you're going to sign a, a seller's agreement. Yep. Uh, basically uh, what's that called? Listing contract. Listing contract. Yep. So sign a, sell, a listing contract and that's going to lay out the terms of the, your relationship. Yeah. And a lot of it's a boilerplate. It's, it's a state contract. We can't change any of the lines on it. Um, yep. State contract, go through the listing, uh, listing agreement. Then we've got a couple disclosures because of the fact that we work with Keller Williams, mm-hmm. um, we're out of the new Berlin office, but we, uh, we work the 83 corridor. We're out in uh, the Wales, Dousman uh, area. Um, we can sell all over the state, but uh, that's kind of our focus, mostly Waukesha County. Mm-hmm. And then um, we, we, 
we do have some we do have some listings and uh, we've sold some homes up north too as well all over the place yeah, yeah. um so uh after that you've picked your real estate real estate agent the next thing you're going to do is develop a listing plan um that you can buy into 100 percent. it needs to be something that you believe in because if you're sitting there butting heads with your realtor that's not going right. to help anything it's going to it's going to stop them from doing their job you're going to be frustrated you're not going to the process is going to be very difficult to yeah, work through. I think the biggest part for us is like we we try to explain our plan but we we try to spend a lot of the meeting listening to the clients because mm -hmm. we have to figure out where where they're at, where they want to go, how they want to do it and what kind mm -hmm. of what kind of timeline that they have and we try to match that. That's the that's the whole idea. We have to be very realistic. We have to let them know these are some of the things that can happen and this is how we deal with them when they do happen. So yeah. um yeah. I think having, it's just yeah, got to set the expectations. Having a solid plan going into the whole thing that 100%. everybody agrees with and everybody's on right. board with is huge. Um and then uh, let your agent bring their expertise to the table is, is one of the things I have written down here to make sure that we um, you know understand that the realtor you guys they do this day in day out this is their life okay you're doing this once every 10 years once every 40 years right. whatever it may be and this person does this day in and day out and when they come into your home and say we need to declutter this countertop we need to clear that out we need to drop some of the family pictures because we want people to feel like it's their house not your house right um and, and these types of things are them doing their job and bringing their expertise it doesn't mean that you don't love your kids anymore because they're not on the stairwell <laughs> okay but but the, true. but true. you got to trust that your right. agent's going to give you those that good advice and if they're afraid of you if they're not going to have the confidence to come in into the situation and do their job because you're going to be argumentative or whatever is it's just going to hurt you in the yeah. long run you know i always and, tell i always tell everybody I'm, I'm only going to try to give you my best advice i'm not going to give you try to try to give you second or third tier i'm trying to I'm trying to give you the best advice to get the best return on your house yeah choose somebody you trust and trust that in their abilities okay um the agents are going to try to be as accommodating and flexible as possible but yep. you got to understand there's within reason you know there's 100 there's, there's got to be within reason there because certain things have to happen in certain time frames and if you agree to a contract that has these dates in it those are dates that you can't change, you know, right. without doing extra work that may not be guaranteed to be able to be done. Yeah, they call it they call it time is of the essence, and that's that's the idea that there's certain there's certain markers that are in there, certain dates that have to be um, within date, and if you're not in within date, you're actually out of contract. So we have to be very careful. Yeah, and that can get you in trouble financially, right. you know. Um, and then uh, they're going to get into uh, your real estate agent. will talk a lot about MLS. MLS is basically the multiple listing service that you guys use to. Um, show houses sure you know i mean that's that's the main avenue in which things generate and populate to all the different real estate websites right. and everything right yeah i think it's i think it's up to i think the all the different websites that are hooked up to mls it's like 350 it could be even more now yeah um there's a ton of websites that do that we put the information to mls and then it trails out it usually takes usually takes depending on the time of day or when you do it i mean when i put my listings at at midnight sometimes they don't they don't update everything else in until a few hours later sure um but yeah when you have those days when you we have to wait and get and get everything on by midnight because you can't put it on the day before unless you're doing it coming soon, yeah. Um, yeah, you put on MLS, get all the information on there correctly, get all the professional photos downloaded, get them named, get them uh, labeled. It takes it takes it takes me if if it's an average listing, it would probably take me four hours to get the the listing up and running. Sure, um, for all the information. So, and do you guys believe heavily in the pregame hype? Uh, for the coming soon's or the yeah, delayed, the coming soon delayed yeah, listings, I mean, it, that kind of stuff. I, yeah, I think it, I think it's a good idea. Here's the here's the best part about it. So let's say you have a property you think is going to be a, 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 a something that hot is property, hot property could yeah. could be something that people really really like. If you go into delayed, um, the thing that's nice is that it gets it gets brought out to MLS, so people that are on MLS, so the agents that are there, they can actually they can actually share them. But it's not something that gets put out on the rest of the sites. Mm -hmm. It's only for delayed. The idea of that is that you're going to generate some interest give them a little extra time to get their people in place as far as who wants to go to the showing, when are they going to go to the showing, get, get everything scheduled out. Yeah. And then that way, when it goes live, it's everything's going to be kind of whipping along and kind of hitting the ground running. Yep. Um, it, all I, the ducks will be in a row. Yeah, already. and I think I think that I think that works out well. The thing is, is that everybody's living on their phones now, and things happen so quickly. Mm -hmm. Whether you do delayed or don't do delayed, I don't know. There's a huge benefit one way or the other. I think it gives agents a little bit more time to say, "Oh, something's coming soon," and might be able to get their people like, "Oh, I want you to know about this listing that's coming up." But to be, to be honest, when it hits the market, it hits the market because yeah. a lot of people are shopping on a lot of different websites. Yeah. Well, and sometimes true game hype is just how soon you get the sign in the yard and those types of things. Well, it's that, funny you, you know? say that we've actually had uh, uh, this this last like three three weeks to six weeks. Um, we've actually had showings happen before I got. Uh, we have a service that Wisconsin Signs does our does our signage. 
before they could get the sign in the ground, we already had showings going on. <laughs> and, you know, I felt bad because I'm like, this house is for sale, right? But they have a schedule of how many signs they can put it in a day. Yeah. And as I'm there, I was I was actually putting new sign panels up. We had to order new sign panels because we had more listings. And I actually had to attach them because the fact that they didn't have them in their shop already because I just got them ordered. Sure. So I'm, I'm out there doing that. And I see an agent come by and say, hey, we're, com- we're coming to show your house. I'm like, perfect. I'm like... Good luck with everything. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm just out here with my, He's my wrenches. putting it together. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. That's funny. Um, so uh, the I'm going to throw a word at you. Okay. And you probably, I, I didn't, now I, I, now, I did not premise Mark with this word at all. It's a word that I've heard thrown around in my 14 years in real estate. And uh, he's like, I'm like, he's I'm, nervous. He's nervous. So when I say the word, I want to know what you think about it. Puffery. Puffery. Yes. So puff the magic dragon? No, like puffery. puffery. Like real estate puffery. Like uh, uh, saying things are better than they really are? Yes. Yeah. Well, you have to be very careful with that, right? I mean, <laughs> it is. Here's, yeah. Here, yeah, here's the thing. It's one thing to say something is spacious. Mm-hmm. It's different to say something is 50 by 50 when it's only 30 by 30. <laughs> yeah. So I think you have to be very, yeah. very careful how you're doing that. Like, um. So just to give you an idea, when we go to measure rooms, some houses don't have rectangular or square rooms. Mm-hmm. Some of them have angles. Multiple some of them, yeah, multiple shapes. Yeah. So when we when we 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 find out from the sellers what they think the room size is, or whether we have a if we've got a if we've got a floor plan that makes it really easy. Yeah. But if we have to go through and measure them, like we're doing our best to estimate them. So when we go on MLS, we actually have a statement that says um, sizes of rooms are not uh, are not verified by broker or agent. Yeah. Um, just to let everybody know. And the truth is. If the people are coming to see the house, and they're gonna they're gonna do that. They can bring they can bring a tape measure. They can bring a laser uh, measure. Want, whatever yeah. we want to do, um, but we try to get it as accurate as possible. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, like when they do the totals of the square footage, we have to be very careful with that. But at the same time, yeah, we have You're to. Trying to get close, we're trying yeah. to get as close as we possibly can, yeah. as far as you can. But I mean, if you got an octagon room, or you've got one that's got a or, curved, yeah, yeah, that's it. Gets or recesses be, or L's recesses, and whatnot, or maybe yeah. it's not. Maybe it's not completely squared out and plumb. Like maybe they're. Yeah. off by a couple inches yeah, yeah okay it's off by four inches this way or maybe three inches this way so oh. yeah we just Puff, have- puffery can go a little yeah far sometimes with people um enchanting fireplace and it's like a little you know uh <laughs> it's actually one that you put that you put you put it in place and yeah, yeah you, you set it in place got electronic <laughs> heater in it or something like that you know and and, and or spacious uh two and a half car garage the, the two to two and a half car. What makes a two to yeah. two and a half? There's not really a measurement out there, you know? So there's a lot of that, all that, those little things of that, that some real estate agents really uh, blow it out of the, take the puffery to a whole nother level, right, you know? Right. Um, and uh, you got to understand when you're reading that listing, you want to make the house sound, sound good. Okay. Um, but, realistic at the same time so if you if you see a lot of these adjectives in there spacious exuberant uh glorious right those that's just somebody over pufferizing we, uh we uh, try we try to install a rule so our rule is that only one adjective per sentence because that makes it a lot easier yeah because if you try to say three or four things people are kind of like okay whatever like i just want to see the pictures yeah they're basically just describing the lipstick on the pig right you know is, is what that usually boils down to <laughs> the house isn't that great and they're trying to snazz it up with some verbiage or whatever right. but um yeah puffery that's a, a That's term funny. that I uh, wanted to see what Mark thought about. <laughs> so uh, the next thing is um, list your house when you're ready, you know, um, and like Mark said, plan ahead of time. How far in advance can we plan this so we can, you know, organize it all so that the sign guy can get there and the photographer and everybody else, all these other things. And then the listing, uh, the whatever, if you're going to do some uh, some pregame hype or whatever, you know, right. that we can have this whole plan laid out so that things go smoothly um, is always a great idea. Um, it can be a very busy and hectic time. Um, so the better you can plan and organize that time i think right. more calm everybody's going to be um and you're going to be in a better space but also you're going to get the most bang for your buck as far as you what your real estate agent can bring to the table and getting more people through that house and give you maximum dollar for your home and i think the other thing too is i think that when uh it, when we we sit down and meet with a home seller or home uh homeowner um for us, it's 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 not a sprint; it's a marathon. So we don't really care. Like, if you want to talk to us, that's fine. Doesn't mean that you have to do something tomorrow. Doesn't mean we have to list it next week. Yeah. If if you're thinking next year, 
sit down and talk with us because it, it gives us a market analysis. Yeah, I mean, we give you an idea right then. And actually, I'll let you know this too: is if uh, if we talk to if we talk to um, some home sellers, they're thinking about listing in a month. We can talk about a price that we want to we want to have at the price uh, as the listing price. But we actually do another market analysis right before it goes live, just to see if anything's shifted and anything's new. Sure. Because if you had three houses sell in the area that all bumped up, you know, uh, what would 10%, be the percent, whatever, whatever it might be, that we're going to reflect that as far as where we're at with the market because we have to be consistent. We have to we have to give them the best the the best opportunity they can get. Yeah, to get that maximum dollar and and eight times out of ten, hiring a real estate agent, or maybe even nine times out of ten, hiring a real estate agent, you're going to get more than you would ever get by selling yourself. Yeah, correct. Yeah, or, I mean, it might even more than that. No, but. I think I, I I did see something funny. Someone said, "Oh, I, I saved a ton of money because I didn't use a realtor," but then. You don't realize how much you might have left on the table. Oh yeah, right. Because yeah. there could have been that much more, a bigger pool of buyers, um, or yeah. just the negotiating element. Right. You know, understanding what the market is and what the market demands, and and then being able to look at this person's finances and everything else to determine what's reasonable. I mean, yeah, I think I think the toughest thing too. It. Yeah, when you explain to somebody about for sale by owner, because a lot of people have the energy to do that, but then when they realize what it takes to do it. I, 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 you know, they could use a bullhorn and stand on their front steps and, and use their bullhorn. That's probably as, as far they're going to reach besides their sign on the street, maybe. Yeah. Um, but the truth, the truth is you have to worry about whether people are pre-approved. I mean, when we, when we, when we take buyers through, they actually have to have a pre-approval letter that says they can purchase that home at that price. Yeah. Um, or actually it should be a little bit more. We always try to have them shop a little bit lower than yeah. what their pre-approval letter is for. And if you get in a contract with somebody that can't afford the house. Right. Then you got another problem, right. you know, I mean, there's just so many issues that having a real estate agent will forego and make that process go so much more smoothly for you. So give Smith team Wisconsin a call. Um, they would be happy to help you out. Um, now, as far as uh, the home listing tips. Um, so one, we've touched on, I think a number of these, sure. uh, make it, making the house, the people who are coming into the house to look at it, make it theirs, not yours. Yeah, We always say, we always say, don't, uh, we want to make sure we declutter, but mostly depersonalize. Right. So the, yeah. the pictures of the whole family, we always tell everybody if you've got artwork that you want to have up, that's fine, as long as it's minimal. Like less is more. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to have you know a picture of grandpa and that, grandma the and stairwell of the pictures. stairwell of pictures, right? And <laughs> yeah. and you know what I, I always tell everybody, you know what they're going to go in a box anyway because you're taking them to the new place. Yeah. So yeah. it makes sense to kind and of depersonalize. People are walking in there staring at Aunt Eunice. Right. And the whole <laughs> the whole idea is that you, like you said before, you want to have the buyers walk in and kind of picture their own family and their own pictures on the wall versus looking at somebody else's. Yeah. Yeah. And you want it to look lived in. You want it to be staged of sort, but you don't want it to really look lived in. Like you don't want to have your dirty dishes on the counter no. and all this other kinds of stuff. You, you the place should be clean. Um, I've we had a couple of recent shorts about underwear. I can't tell you how many times I show up for an inspection and there was a dirty pair of underwear laying in the middle of the floor. I haven't had them on kitchen counters before. People, find the laundry basket. Impress right. your wife a little bit, okay? Show her that you know where that laundry basket is. And well, your, and I can tell you that way, when we when we've shown houses that we're getting ready for an open house, I th there's plenty of times that I've ran the vacuum or I've wiped things down or you know and it's not it's not it's not because people didn't didn't want to do it. It's because they're probably in a hurry. They're trying trying to get out the door because they got yeah. stuff going on. Um, but we we do that. We always make sure to do a little extra. We make sure the toilet seats are down, right? Make sure yeah. the toilet paper looks nice and you know all that. Or kind that of there stuff. is toilet paper. Or that there is toilet paper. <laughs> When everybody's coming to your house, inevitably, the, when they walk through the door, the little kid's going to have to go to the bathroom right. or, or whatever, you know. Right. So just have have that be prepared, you know. Um, fresh baked bribery, how do you feel about that? Uh, I don't have a problem with it. A lot of times the sellers will offer to do that. Like you walk in and they already have a pie baking or mm -hmm. they've got they've got nice candles or something, which is fine. Yeah. I always tell them, though, like we're going to put the candles out before we leave because yeah, we don't want to leave anything like, yeah, yeah. going on. Uh, lots of times um, we uh, uh, talk about um, the psychology of, behind some of these things you know what i mean sure. and having that welcoming environment with the lights on and the the windows open not the shade shut all those things play a role in people's mind right whether they want it to or not yeah you I, know like making sure all the lights are on in the house and make sure the blinds are up is mm -hmm. a huge deal because nobody wants to look at a house that's dark and where you can't see everything and yeah um like you said like, like before like when we've done inspections um when you've walked into a a, a, a lower level or a basement and there's four light bulbs that can be on, but there's only three of them. And you realize the one that's not on, you look in that corner and you realize there's a problem with the foundation, the right? So problem, then you're bringing yeah. your phone out, you're bringing your lights out, you're mm -hmm. looking at your flashlights, making sure everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it, the, all of that uh, plays a plays a, yeah. uh, an important part. All of it plays a role. And, you know, when it comes to um, the home, you want it to be a, 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 a temperature that's going to be comfortable for everybody. I was at an inspection yesterday, 85 degrees in the house. 
And the seller was there when I got there, had all the windows open. It was a 90 degree day. And I'm like, the the buyers are going to be coming here. And I'm sitting here. I haven't even started inspecting yet. And I'm <laughs> dripping, you know, right. I'm like, this is not comfortable environment to come and look at houses and right. stuff. And I get that. He, he liked it to he each liked, their own, right? Yeah. To each their own. But you got, you got to realize that you're not the one buying this house and you want to impress the people that are buying this house. Well, not only that, but if the windows are open <laughs> and it's hot in the house, you're wondering if it's got AC or if the AC works. Right? Your questions, That's my first, first, questions. Yeah. First questions. Yeah. And their air conditioner was working fine. I, I, I got, it up and it was humming and he had he had neglected his hvac equipment a bit but it worked you right. know so i'm like, like dude turn that on get that temperature 70 to 72 degrees you guys is really the butter zone when people are coming in to look at your home okay um and if it's a hot day out 70 feels really relieving and it puts sure. you in that instantly puts you in that good whoo place you know and right. you're you're ready to might want you might want to stick around a little longer and look at the house a little bit more yeah instead of oh my god it's so hot in here i gotta get out to the car you know or whatever right. it, it's just uh, it just some of those little things can make a, a big difference um and then uh pre-lease inspection i don't we talked about it. We had an extensive ep- episode on that. I don't see a downside to a pre-listing inspection. because yeah, you're telling them the seller knows what they're selling, buyers know what they're buying. Yeah, and, and there's really no downside to it, but some agents will try to tell you that there's a downside, but it's really not. You know, your house is your house. If you're selling a pig, it's a pig. It just... But that I'm, I'm selling a pig and I'm not going to do anything about it. And this is an act. Well, and the price. other thing too, like you always said too, is that is that when you're doing the when you're doing the checkup on the house. Sometimes you're showing how great the house is and mm-hmm. what, what great shape it's in because, yeah. I mean, if their biggest problem is they've got a GFCI outlet that needs to be rewired or they need smoke detectors. Big deal. Okay, you're in great shape. Yeah, like, yeah. So. yeah. Or balusters on a deck. or I mean, there's all kinds right. of or, – or a handrail here for a V. I mean, there's all kinds of that little stuff that isn't going to scare anybody away. Um, but it's like a – when you put that report together, it's like a marketing portfolio. This is everything I have. It's we're showing not only that the fact that your air conditioner needs to be cleaned, maybe, but we're showing that you have 15 inches of insulation in your attic. We're showing that you have 20 years left on your roof. We're showing that your siding's in great shape. I mean, there's a lot of really good things being shown off in there. Um, but at the same time, you're not going to have anybody coming back at you trying to negotiate for things that they claim they weren't aware of when they wrote on that. Right. home to, to uh, up whatever price they were offering you know right. so lots of good things not a downside at all to a, ever to a pre-listing inspection um so as far as so the next one i put up better 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 and then i said be patient because lots of times when you guys uh you know, show a house let's say 15 20 times right um the whole story is the first offer is usually the best offer but that's not always the case yeah not always but it, it does it, it does, does happen it does happen and but having a qualified agent there to help you look through those offers to determine hey yes this one is uh um an all cash offer but they're offering you ten thousand dollars less this looks like a really solid buyer and and the only thing that they're asking for is a home inspection with a contingency limit of ten thousand dollars right you know i mean yeah we that, so just just to let you know so if we have multiple offers in a situation like that we actually put together a spreadsheet where we do all the contingencies sure. and we 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 measure apples to apples, oranges to oranges. We go through the entire sheet with the sellers and let them know what each off, which each offer is, mm-hmm. and kind of. And sometimes we color code it like red, yellow, green. Like these are really good things. Red, not so great. Yeah. And yellow, this is here. We go through the entire spreadsheet so they have a really good idea. By the time we get to the end, they're kind of honing in. Okay, it's between these two, and here's why. Yeah. Um, as far as the cash portion, um, you know, they always say cash is king, and which is true. But um, I can tell you that if someone's got a pocket full of money and they're not they're not getting a mortgage, they're probably a little bit more likely to walk away from a house and lose their earnest money because they got plenty of money. Yeah, they're uh, they're there. prepared to lose uh, right. eight thousand bucks or whatever right. on a million dollar house or whatever. Right. You know, it's just sadly that is what it is. But um, looking at these offers and breaking it all down with a qualified real estate agent is huge. Okay, and uh, not every offer is made equal. Um, sometimes it can come down to uh, credit history. Sometimes it can come down to buyer quality. Sometimes is are they at the top of their dollar or that they're going to be really stretched to try? And if they if they go out and buy a new car, they're going to screw up this whole deal. Or whatever that the real estate agent is going to help you work through all of that and understand the limitations of these different offers and the different contingencies that are being presented to you. Then a spreadsheet's a great way to do it because yep. that kind and breaks it all down so yeah um the uh, next thing so after you've got an offer to purchase um so somebody gave you an offer to the home you've gone through that whole process you picked out which one is your favorite um and you're set okay i'm 
I'm going to sign this contract or whatever. And uh, sometimes there is uh, negotiating goes back and forth with what's called amendments, right? Yep. And these amendments are okay. So the offer offered you uh, the per- the person buying your home offered you three hundred fifty thousand dollars, okay, and you want to get three seventy. Uh, your original list price was let's say three eighty, okay. So you you send back an amendment for three seventy with all their contingencies or whatever, and hope. Yeah, we do. Accepted. Yeah, we we do a counter at that point. So um, before before anything's accepted, you you'd be doing a counter. So we go back with a counter and saying, okay, we love everything about the offer. So we're going to initial that, but here's what we want changed. So amendments are after. Yeah. So that'd be after. So we do an offer. We'd be a part of the counter offer. So we counter, we counter for whatever the seller is looking to do um, and trying to get something uh, accomplished that way. And and that's where, that's where it becomes very important to have a really good relationship with the agents Mm -hmm. for us. I mean, if if we have buyers that were out there um, and they're interested in a, in a condo or a home, um, we reach out to the listing agent immediately to try to start a good dialogue with them because we want to have make make sure that we have good conversation. Um, The toughest thing as a listing agent, I can tell you from from my perspective for for sellers is we get a blind offer, which either somebody either just made it because their sellers love it and they're going to see it. They're going to make an offer sight unseen, or they're going to come, they come and see the house and we're not sure out of all the showings and all the open houses, all of a sudden we get a, we get a blind offer out of nowhere, an agent that I've never talked to um, for better or for worse. I've never talked to them. And all of a sudden we've got an offer. Well, it kind of it makes it it makes it more difficult when you don't when you don't have good uh, dialogue with the other agent. So and you trust that offer. I yeah. just to everybody who's listening, who's anybody's an agent, please. The best thing you can do in any negotiation and any type of offer situation is to to please communicate. <laughs> communicate. It's so important. Um, and it, and uh, and we tell our sellers up front. We tell them who we've had a good discussion with as far as agents are concerned, yeah. and let them know who we feel really comfortable with as far as. Like this is how many times they've texted us. This is how many times we have conversations. They got back to us. This is the things that they did. And a lot of times if you have that communication, sometimes those offers are written exactly like the seller would like to see them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, Tip to anybody else: Blind offers are you can do them, but they're not as they're they're not going to be as effective as ones bit, that you that you questionable. Yeah, you get to talk through, you got to get to talk through it. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, so the uh, counter offers are what we do during the negotiation negotiating part. Amendments are things that happen after that. If right. we need to change the contract. Yeah, so let's, yeah, let's say like something that. happens where the, like they couldn't get a contractor for this, this, and this, and it's they got a timeline on it. Yep. Then you just say you call you call and talk to them, and then you write up an amendment saying, "Hey, uh, we need another three days for this." To be, is that okay? Yes, uh, our people would sign. Their people would sign. Yeah. We move it on. And amendments also take place as a part of findings and home inspection occasionally. Too. Sure. So they could uh, uh, the home inspection contingency comes through, and they say, okay, we're willing to waive our home inspection contingency as long as you agree to, you know, have the furnace serviced and make sure make sure it's right. working properly or yeah. whatever that may be. What we're covering right now, like uh, appraisal gap, used to be a, uh, it still is a big deal, but it was a bigger deal a while ago. Now inspection gap seems to be a bigger a bigger issue now. So someone says, hey, I do want an inspection, but I tell you what, we're going to cover the first three to five thousand dollars of repairs. Yeah. Um, um, and the idea of that is you're letting the seller know, like, look, we want to have the inspection, make sure there's nothing major that happened at the house. But I'm not going to um, nickel and dime. But I'm not going to nickel and dime you for small yeah. things. And if they add up to three thousand, we're going to cover that. And I think that's a really smart way to do it because of the fact that, um, I mean, it, depending on what the market is, they yeah. could they could ask for inspection and say we want everything that's on this. And I've seen the reports that we've we've generated together. And what are they seventy, eighty, sometimes yeah. hundred pages, depending yeah. on what the house depending is, how many pictures and stuff. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. that's that's the newest thing now is inspection gap. Yeah, and the thing the thing with it is is the inspection is uh, not just for the buyer, but it also protects the seller. I mean, because yep. if the if if you don't have any inspection contingency, and then the buyer moves in and they find X, Y, and Z, next thing the only way to do any negotiating on all that or whatever is hire lawyers and sue people. Right. I mean, that's not a fun place. Yeah, because be. once yeah once it closes, the agency is done. Yeah, um, as far as uh, having the agents involved, and the one thing that ties them together is the RECR. Um, there is a new. I just found. Out, uh, we just got an email saying there's a new RECR that's being offered out. I haven't looked at it yet, but I know that it's. I think it was just emailed today. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, the RECR it covers a ton of stuff, but you only get basically four lines to fill out the information of what you do or don't know about mm-hmm. your house. Yeah. And to be honest, I, the better, the more information that you can provide to the buyers, I think it's it's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, because if they if the if the people move in or whatever, and or if you had that inspection done and you find out that there's. Uh, mold in your attic you know and you know whatever they can you can negotiate that then instead of trying to deal with it later on with attorneys who are going to get 
lead you dry for ten grand sure. without even anything getting fixed or sure. settled. You know, yep. So it just is uh, uh, not a bad way to go at ha- allowing people to have those inspections done and to uh, um, understand that that's not just there to, to serve the buyer, but it's also to uh, protect you a little bit as well. Because if the home inspector comes through and doesn't find something and you didn't know about it, then there's no way they're going to be able to come back and sue you for it later on down the road. You know, give, at least it gives you another layer of protection. Well, and I think the best thing is that it's a, it's a third party. It's, it's an objective, objective, um, inspection it's not like it's not like team smith has inspectors right yeah um yeah. it's a third party company they come through and they give their objective and um that, that's the best way to do it yeah for sure uh so you got the accepted offer and the next thing you're going to go the, the buyer is going to have to submit their earnest money uh, earnest money is basically their financial commitment to the contract and that yeah basically be- it just makes it makes it a um it makes the 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 offer bona fide so right now customarily it's usually one to two percent uh mm-hmm. for earnest money uh and it's it's not due at the time that you hand in the that you hand in that it's actually due five days it's five days after the offer has been accepted so from that point in time you've got five days and that yep. also includes postmark so let's say you were busy you're out of town you come back and on the fourth or fifth day you write a check and you get it postmarked if it goes through to that next Monday or Tuesday and it's still postmarked for that, it's still good. Yeah. Um, and there are ways to do that digitally now too. Yeah. Right? So we use a lot of times we use trust funds, which is really easy. It's basically like wiring the money. Mm-hmm. It's electronic. It makes it easy. Um, the other thing that we're finding now is that some people are saying, Hey, I love this house so much that my earnest money is non-refundable. So okay. basically saying, I love this house so much. I'm not walking away from this deal That's and you can keep it. And then they'll know. raise instead of, let's say, let's say it's a $300,000 home. And normal earnest money would be somewhere around the $3,000 range. Someone will say, you know what? I'm going to put $10,000 down. So more than almost three times. Yeah. Um, and I'll make it non-refundable. That, that, that shows commitment. That shows commitment. That shows that someone that says, I'm not messing around. And if I am to walk at all for any, any doesn't matter what the reason is, you get to keep my money. You get to keep that money. Right. So yeah. that's something that that's, that's a, something new that's going on it's now. It's a big, big bonus for a seller if you're looking at offer different sure. offers. Yeah, for sure. sure. And that, that earnest money is going to have a, a, date, a date that's written in the contract. So you're going to be able to see that. Yeah, so right. yeah, so the earnest money is yeah, five days from the accepted yep. offer. Uh, then we're going to have your inspections. Inspections, um, generally the first one that's going to happen is your home inspection if that's a contingency in your offer to purchase. Um, other inspections, if they did have other ancillary inspections listed in there, like they wanted to have a specific roofer come and look at the roof or something like that, you know, those are things you can write in the offer to purchase as well under other inspections. I haven't, I haven't seen somebody ask for a specific uh, person. Very a lot rare. of times uh, with companies, uh, there are sellers that have used, so if it comes to septic inspection or water, and well, usually you're you're going to have that company that's been servicing them the equipment yeah. to do to do the inspection just because they've got a they've also got a service record on yeah. the property. So that well, and septic is usually taken care of by the seller generally. It speaking. is, um, and right. some buyers have offered to do that as well. Like, hey, yeah. not only do we love your property, but we're going to pay we'll pay for the septic and we'll well. Pay the eight hundred thousand dollars, whatever it may be, to yeah. get that well and septic yep. inspected. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so those inspections, there are going to be contingency deadlines that have to be met with those. If the one of those contingency deadlines comes and passes. That is basically the same as waiving that and that uh, contingency. Yeah, it expires. Yep, yeah, it expires. Just expires yeah, um, and then uh, the appraisal is going to happen. Usually, people wait till after the home inspection is done to make sure that they're still, and then negotiating from the home inspection is done if there's any, um, to make sure that they're still interested in the home and they're not going to just spend five hundred dollars on appraisal right. when they may not actually. Yeah, and the lenders, the lenders on the buyer side will will order appraisal. Yeah, um, and and so the newest thing with that, like you, like I was saying before, a little bit. Prior to that, to the inspection gap is appraisal gap. Um, people are using appraisal gap because of the fact that some of these offers are coming in and they're so much higher than what the list price might be, um, which is great, but it still has to appraise. And yeah. so what happens is if, um, let's say they have an idea like, you know what, we made a really, really, really good offer on this house and maybe it's 30000 or 40000 over, it might not appraise at that rate. So what a lot of people are writing in is if they have the money, if they have the opportunity to do it, they'll say, you know what, if it doesn't appraise out, we'll, we'll, we'll offer a $20,000 appraisal gap, we'll make up the difference, which is going to be the difference. So when they come yeah. to, when they come to closing, they're actually going to put $20,000 more into the, to yeah. cover that difference. Cause the bank's only going to a loan on what's the appraised value Correct. is. And you would have to make up that difference if it is up over that. Yeah. Correct. Um, as uh, this is all going on, title work kind of is working in the background, yep. you know, and they're basically the title company. They're going to verify, 
verify um, the owner. They're going to verify the lot. They're going to make sure there's not any liens on the property. All that kind of stuff. Make goes sure everything's into your clear. Title. It's good. Yeah, you, you've got you got the clear ability to transfer the property. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, and then uh, closing uh, is usually for the buyers is going to be very much in person at that time. You go through each piece of paper. Yep. Um, for the sellers, lots of times they show up and they have an abbreviated version for the sellers. Yep. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of times now. Um, unless the a lot of times, sometimes there's a relationship that develops between the buyers and sellers because there's some sellers that are so so in love with the house that they're selling, yeah. and they really want to make sure that the buyers know everything about it. They'd love to meet them. That's completely possible, and we've had that happen. We just we had a we had where the sellers met the buyers at the closing, which was great. I find there's it a other, lot with VA people, yeah, the veterans. They get into each other. You know, and, funny and that you say that. Way, that actually did happen. At the, it was a did VA it? closing. Yeah. Um, but the uh, uh, the other thing too was that the um, with pre signing, um, we've had people who have moved out of state, and obviously they need to find. Um, we either need to find them. Uh, we use a lot of times we use Focus Title, and then um, they their sister company. Uh, we can usually find uh, one of those in an area where they're at, so they can pre sign and have a notary there sure, to do everything. If they're elsewhere, or yep. like if they're in the military and they're traveling or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then uh, so you get the closing. Uh, you go through all the paperwork. You sign a million times or whatever. Right. Um, and then uh, what is so if you're selling a home and then buying a home, sometimes those transactions happen. Boom, boom, boom. And, yep. and that is occasionally the case. Um, but usually there today you try to have as a little bit of a gap in there. Right. Certain things take certain times yeah. to transfer so we, money. What we always tell everybody, like if they're talking to the lender, they get everything lined up for, for wire transmittal and um, it goes through um, for the title company. Um, one thing that's really nice is that if you're, if you're, Selling on one end and you're buying on the other and it ends up to be the same title company, they can actually just take the funds, hold them until one or two days or three days later. Or whatever, yeah. yeah, hold on to that in, in the trust and then um, release those funds at that point in time. Um, we always tell everybody, uh, if you can get an early closing time during the day, that's much easier than a 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. or 445. Because yeah. if anything happens with that with that wire transfer, um, you're going to have to wait till the next day. Oh, yeah. So it's much nicer to get an early slot. Now, Say I'm 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 selling my house. I'm cashing out. I close. How many days till I see the cash? Depends how you're going to do it. So um, you can you can be given a check. And you that can, day you can yeah you can get a check that okay. day um, and walk out and that, that that's that's For happened. Three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you can get a check. That's um, pretty crazy. Is it big? We don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't encourage that. We don't encourage that. It's much better just if we we, we uh, will get the bank account numbers and make sure everything gets wired over. Yeah. Um, and then usually that's the issue. I, more than likely, a lot of times uh, when people are buying or selling, a lot of times if they're buying, they're pulling funds from a lot of different areas, yeah. and so it needs to get to one concentrated place in order to make that that. Especially that if there's gifts and other things. Oh yeah, if there's gifts, kind of if they're using yeah. retirement money, things like that. that yep. There's a lot of different things. Home that people, sale money, and home all that sale kind of investments, stuff. all that. Yeah, kind of stuff. you're going to transfer more than ten thousand or ten thousand dollars or more. There's other paperwork and stuff that has to go through with everything. So yeah, um, and then the the last thing is after you get done selling your house, managing the proceeds of your home sale. So if you have uh, sold your house and in the these days, a lot of people that sell in their house have extra money that comes out of the sale because home values went up so dramatically. Um, you got to be careful what you do with that money uh, and as far as taxes and reinvestment and other types of things to make sure that, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to hold on to that money and you're going to, you're going to buy another house within, I think it's 12 months, you don't have to pay taxes on that. Money, yeah. So I, I try to, something like that, I try right? to make sure that I let everybody know that we, we do not provide any legal advice. No, this is no legal advice and no or tax, tax advice. advice. All right. So it's <laughs> yeah. always best to, to, to talk to your professionals. Um, we do have people we can refer you to and they yeah. can give you the, that advice. But um, yeah, a lot of it gets tricky, especially, especially with, um, with uh, transfers. So like um, uh, we had a, we had a couple that were transferred that weren't, weren't an outright sale. Basically where someone is selling a property and they're going to be buying a property. It's that's a like property. They can use that. Yeah. So we, we, there's different, there's different things that can happen, but yeah, always talk to your, your tax professionals and talk to your legal, uh, legal counsel. Yeah. So when Tammy and I sold our condo and we, you know, we 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 had to bring sixteen thousand dollars to the table to close on this thing in two thousand and nine. Okay, um, and we went and lived in our in laws back here. We didn't have to deal with any of that because there was no there was no hundred thousand dollars of extra money. You know, it was Matt. You got to sell your motorcycle so we can make down payment on the next house. Don't worry, I promise I'll get you a motorcycle. Pete, how many motorcycles I got in the garage these days? Carried How it. many ATVs do you have? <laughs> with the I wasn't, wasn't going to talk about those, <laughs> nor the tractor or anything else. But um, yeah, is it's something that you need to make sure you're managing those funds properly, so you maximize the money that you get to keep and minimize what you have to pay in taxes or would, would essentially could be lost. Yeah. And the biggest, the biggest thing that we do um, post closing is we let everybody know that we're going to be sending out a, a closing statement. So, 
through all the the entire year, all the sales that are happening, buy and sell, buy and sell, we hand out, we actually provide a closing statement at the end of the year so that they can be prepared for their their taxes for the following year. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So that is the home selling process. If you have any questions about it, you can always reach out to Team Smith, Wisconsin. Um, you can also rewatch the video if you want. Um, but uh, they'd be happy to come out and kind of explain their process. They would give you their uh, listing pitch and kind of go through their sure. whole um, process and what they provide you as, as a potential lister for your home. Um, they'd be happy to do a free market analysis for you. Yep. Team Smith, Wisconsin. That's right. Uh, 262-271-6971. Call anytime. I'll answer my phone or text me. Um, you or go. you can go to our website, uh, teamsmithwisconsin.com. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, so the next one we got is our question giveaway that we do every week. So the question giveaway this week is, how often should you change a one-inch filter on your furnace? The person that answers most closely to this will win the prize. The prize today is a $15 Dairy Queen gift card so we'll have that uh for the winner of that uh, the rule with that is if you've won a prize within the last month you cannot win a prize right now um <laughs> and then uh, it, the the answer closest to what i have written up there um is the person that will win that prize and we'll ship it off to you i was gonna say with a with the smoke that we had that last week or week and a half maybe or we'll one, change it more frequently you might want to change a little bit more because yeah. I, I think a lot of people got some dirty filters and when we're talking about filters folks you should not be able to see through it Okay, you can see my head bobbing around behind there. You should not be able to see through your filter. You want to buy a nice corrugated white filter like this. Um, it's going to do a much better job. These things, you technically you're supposed to change them once a month. I was just going to say, yeah. I, I was going to say the more expensive the filter, the less you have to change it. Yeah. I think I think you, if you buy a middle of the road, you probably want to change it and a little you, bit more you often. Want to, you want to have a filter that's going to catch some of the junk and gunk, you know. So um, so that's how that works. And then also on your furnace filter, there's going to be a little arrow. Um, make sure the arrow is always pointing towards the burners of your furnace. Furnace. All right, so that is Burners. our question of the week. Um, the uh, next thing we have is uh, five things that we can do to help make the home inspection go more smoothly. Go more smoothly. I got an idea. You got an idea? Start it off. Move, you move everything around. If, it, if it's your, in your basement, move everything away from the wall so that the inspector can look at the entire periphery of the house. Yeah, yeah, because if you pile a bunch of boxes up against something to hide it, it, you can't, uh, homeless better can't see it, but that's also you hiding something. That's essentially you committing fraud to the people <laughs> that are looking to buy your house. Right. More or less. Intentionally or unintentionally. Yeah. And, yeah. and so don't, don't hide things in your house. Don't, don't emergency go up on your roof and start putting down roof cock. Um, that would be another one. You know, I stepped in so much roof cock when I first started. Um, it was just ridiculous. Really? I, but yeah. You think stepping on bubble gum? Roof clocks, oh yeah, way times stickier, worse. yeah, times and it worse. was almost as if they went up there hours before I got there, and I'm walking around the roof, and it, and it blended in or whatever, you know, and next thing you know, oh, it's right, and it's and not coming off your shoe, no, you know, um, so uh, what would be another one you think? Uh, make sure all the lights are on. Make sure all the lights are on. Not a bad idea. Um, yeah. and maybe if you had all of your stuff as far make as make sure all the bulbs are working. All the bulbs are working. If, if the if the bulb's not working, what do I got to do as a home inspector? I got to say, like, and the biggest and inoperative. The, and the biggest thing for both of us is it's always nice to know what the year of the appliance is because just because the the furnace says it was manufactured in 1990. Doesn't mean it was installed. Yeah. It could have been sitting in a warehouse for three years. Yep. So it's always nice to know when I it was installed. I love it when people lay out their maintenance records and stuff. Oh on yeah, the kitchen counter for me. <laughs> Love it. Make it easy. Yeah, make it easy. And it shows that you're being forthright, that you are being a responsible homeowner, that you're taking you know, care of your stuff. Taking care of your stuff, you know? What, I mean, what is that saying? If you take care of your house, it'll take better care. you take <laughs> better you take care of your house, better it's gonna take care of you folks. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and then you know, with the the home inspection, we do have a uh, flyer. I don't think I have one here. Um, but we do have a flyer that is a, uh, a seller's guide to surviving a home inspection. It gets a little bit into the psychology of you know putting the home inspector in a good frame of mind versus showing them showing up and you yell at them because you don't want the home inspector to come. Don't find any bad shit at my house, man. You know, and <laughs> being all upset with the home inspector to begin with just puts them in an awkward, you know, and it just makes it. Yeah, you want you want to have them in, in a good mood, um, and uh, you know make it so that they can do their job. You have the house at a right in a good temperature. Check your windows and operate your windows a little bit before the home inspection to make sure they're gonna they're all working. If they're not working, leave a note. Um, but sometimes I'm coming into a house and opening up a window that hasn't been opened in two, two, three, four years, and it's sticky. I have to report the window stuck shut. I couldn't operate it. You know, and yeah, not a huge not a huge deal, but it's another tick in the in yeah, the, in just the like column. One of those little things that's easy for you to do as a homeowner that makes that process go a little bit more smoothly for you so if you would like a copy of that flyer 
drop us an email uh, down in the comments below, or you can email us at the help of homeless better at gmail.com. We'd be happy to send you a digital version of that. Um, and it's the uh, a seller's guide to surviving a home inspection. So happy awesome. to give that to you for free. Um, now, uh, let's see here. What else we got here that we can, uh, what do we got time wise? Do uh, you think we got the reasons for decluttering? Are we up, to, up against we're, the clock? We're up against the clock a little bit. Probably. We'll, we can do it next time. We'll do it next time. We'll save that till next time. So next time when Mark's here, we're going to go through the reasons why it's a good idea to declutter your home. Uh, but we're going to give you our, our tip of the week. The tip of the week this week is move furniture occasionally to prevent carpet wear mm-hmm. um, patterns. So, um, something as simple as moving your couch three feet over or two feet over, you know, forces people to walk in a different area and you're not going to get that dark gray area in your carpet that shows where people have been walking for the last 10 years. And you see, you see that on hardwood floors too, when people have rugs down, Yeah. if it's in an entryway or where there's light shining in, you'll, if it's there for that many years and you pull it away, you be staining everything. Yeah. Everything yeah. underneath is fine. Everything outside of it has been, has been uh, faded. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it takes a long time to correct that. So if you move these things around once in a while, it helps prevent a lot of that. And it, it prevents excess carpet wear. It, it, people, you don't want them to come into your house when you're looking to sell your house. And uh, there's these big tracks where, yeah, the, we have Matt, we have Matt come over and move our furniture every yeah, once in a while. Like, right. Matt, come on over and move that stuff around. It's, it's super easy though. I mean, <laughs> you get a couple of these little slider deals, you know, and you can, Oh, those are that. great. I yeah, love those things. You can push that thing what do they call those uh, monster sliders or there's gor- the gorilla? monster sliders are the big ones yeah those are yeah, awesome those are awesome um yeah. and uh like on our i threw couch- my couch right out the window because it went so fast it was amazing <laughs> it's so oh, cool, I didn't. our ones that we, our couches that we have upstairs we actually put the got little cheaper ones and we just leave them underneath there yeah and so we probably change our furniture up what every year once a year <laughs> <laughs> about that right <laughs> We do. <laughs> <laughs> when was the when was the last time we changed it around? Where you're doing when we bought new furniture over, and my yeah. chair was over by the dining room. I mean, oh, that was a couple of years ago, honey. But we had the carpets cleaned, so we did move it what, yeah, a year take, ago. When we had the yeah, we get the carpets cleaned, cleaned every year. Um, Nominee Falls Carpet Cleaning. If you're looking for somebody, they're super reasonable. They do a great job. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we got to have them on the show, honey. Talk about carpet cleaning. There you go. There we go. Love it. Right at it um so uh, that is our uh, tip of the week uh and then uh, in closing here we have a really interesting show coming up next week mrs helpful home inspector is going to be running the show oh boy i know right mr nice. helpful home inspector is going to be on his way up north because we have uh, my whole extended family's coming up and i'm going to be spending an entire week up north excited Ooh. Oh boy. Excited, oh boy. Oh boy. I know, right? So um so yeah, so I'm gonna be on the road, but Mrs. Helpful Homeless Petter is gonna be coming in here and she's gonna be talking with a couple of friends of ours. Oh good. Um, you could have Mark on even too if you wanted to, but uh they're having a conversation about what it's like to have a second home. Oh um, which is uh Legitimate thing. You it's know work. I mean? It's work. I'll it's tell you what it is. It's a lot of work. work. You wouldn't think so, you know, but they're going to get into all that, the pros and the cons. Um, they're going to get into some of the, the stuff with the expenses and stuff, a little bit about security and, uh, you know, how do you uh, keep a property that you're three and a half hours away from safe and, and not get damaged and, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, they're going to have a good conversation about security system versus That's security great. cameras. Uh, they're also going to talk a little bit about doing uh, renovations up north little bit more limited than you are down here as far as contractors go 100 percent. yeah we had we were we were getting bids to uh, do the excavation of the property we bought across the street from up north and uh that we had probably what four guys come in three of them showed up stunk of alcohol oh. and the one guy he's like oh i'm gonna be a little bit late the fish are biting today i'm gonna it's gonna, i'm gonna be out here a couple more hours and then i'll stop by sound good and it's what are you gonna do if fishing's good the work doesn't happen you know so uh but uh we did get a couple of uh really good we got two really good guys and one of them that we ended up hiring did a great job nice but, uh yeah so that is a little bit of a different uh beast yeah. up there so they're gonna get in a little bit into that stuff um and uh yeah lots of good stuff but thanks for coming out today man I appreciate yeah, thank you, you coming Thank yep. you. And uh, lots of good stuff out there, you guys, about the listing process. Um, the replay will be up uh, later this week-ish, next week maybe, depending on how fast Tammy gets to it. I'll have the podcast up uh, in the next day or so. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have little piece meals and stuff that will come out occasionally. But thanks again for tuning in, you guys. I really appreciate you. Um, if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button, smash the bell button, and give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Also, if you have any suggestions for uh, future content, label them down below in the comments. That would be awesome. Um, but otherwise, you guys, remember the Betty you take care of your house better it's going to take care of you in the long run nice good one. Oh, team smith wisconsin what's the number one last time 262-271-6971 or go to our website teamsmithwisconsin.com excellent have a great one you guys